Let me take you on a journey. Imagine going down to your local coffee shop one morning. You ask the lady behind the counter for a large cappuccino. She smiles but shakes her head. No cappuccino. You ask for a cafe latte instead. She shakes her head again. Just coffee, you ask desperately? No, sorry. The scenario is not that far-fetched. Coffee ecosystems need stable environments but are increasingly under threat because of rising temperatures and unstable and extreme weather conditions, such as heavy rains, gusty winds, and prolonged dry seasons. Climate change is a global problem, however impacts differ according to location. Climate change affects all of us working in the coffee sector, hence there is a need for tackling this issue together. The Initiative for Coffee and Climate is a network of many relevant stakeholders in the coffee sector. In this initiative, private and public partners are behind one common goal and format. The initiative is steadily growing and follows a pre-competitive approach, meaning that it is open to incorporate like-minded, dedicated partners. This is the CNC approach, or in other words, the roadmap to achieving the goal. The goal is to enable coffee farmers to effectively respond to climate change. In order to achieve this goal, Farmers need to be aware of the impact of climate change in order to identify adaptation practices which fit to their local environment. In addition, there needs to be continuous monitoring since there is no final solution for adaptation. The starting point of this roadmap is that nobody knows how climate is really going to change. So we start by assessing the common risk in order to find a path which is applicable in all coffee growing regions. We define five steps, which are promoted by farmer trainers and extension agents. We start by one, setting the scene, then two, assess the challenges, and three, plan adaption. We four, validate and implement the adaptation options before five, we consolidate all our experiences into a central online-based knowledge hub, aka the toolbox, which makes learning available to everybody. What we know is that climate change is a major challenge for smallholder farmers. As we can see in Tanzania, it leads to prolonged dry seasons with large areas becoming unsuitable for coffee production. Unpredictable rainfall affecting especially farmers who depend heavily on rain-fed agriculture. More and more soil erosion. And an increase in pests and diseases. We identified the impacts of climate change together and combined scientific and community knowledge. We aim to offer practical hands-on and applicable tools. Hence, we have used state-of-the-art scientific know-how and research data and conducted workshops with farmers and interviewed extensionists to triangulate the result. Globally, we have worked with SIA and Kabi. In Tanzania, we have conducted research with IITA and Yara to develop recommendations for management practices and fertilizer applications based on soil and leaf analysis at different altitudes. We have identified options for adaptation which have been eagerly taken up by farmers, shade tree planting, planting of cover crops, and digging of water basins in between the coffee trees. We have trained farmers on these practices in our pilot projects. These percentages shown here are adaptation rates from southern Tanzania where 1,300 farmers were trained. And we validated these practices in the field, such as mulching, and conservation agriculture for maize and beans. Conservation agriculture discourages farmers from plowing their fields since this leads to continuous soil disturbance, runoff, and loss of nutrients. Instead, CA promotes digging of basins or ripping of fields in food crop production. Here you can see a ripper and how it works in the field. The rip lines are then used for planting seeds and putting inputs. We have trained 15,000 farmers and after only two seasons, adoption is already high. This leads to an immediate increase in yields. Our experience in Tanzania has been for yields to double within one season. However, let's not be blind. Adoption also comes at a cost, so we also need to look at the effect on gross margin. In the case shown here from our pilot project in Brazil, we can see that costs have increased by 88% due to labor and inputs. However, also the gross margin has gone up by 143%. Adaptation pays. We have trained trainers and other implementers on the CNC approach and contributed extensively to the national sustainability curriculum. We have established local expert committees who meet on a regular basis. We have designed a source book and a toolbox which you can access online. 
They contain background information on climate change, information on adaptation options, and tools and formats along the five steps of the CNC approach. The source book is available in all local languages of the pilot countries, including a Kiswahili version for Tanzania. Everybody can contribute to the toolbox and share the experiences with other stakeholders. So far, we have worked in four pilot countries. In the next three years, we plan to reach 70,000 beneficiaries in cooperation with other partners. We will further develop the CNC approach and look beyond the farm level to communities and landscape levels. CNC is committed also on a political level to support the processes for adaptation to climate change. Just recently at COP21 in Paris, CNC launched an official statement pledging to address climate change in producing regions. Hence, we are calling upon all stakeholders in the coffee sector to participate, to engage in dialogue, and to establish local and regional climate platforms. We invite you to join the CNC initiative so that when you do go down to your local coffee shop, you can rest assured you'll be able to sip your coffee.